The next talk is by Nicolas uh, Branchet, uh, who is working at the uni uh, University for Applied Sciences in uh, Geneva, and by Felix Benzmann from the uh, Gieses Leibniz Institute for the Social Sciences. Uh, they will introduce uh, the linked SwissBib project. Well, that's just yours. Okay, hi everybody. Just start. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hi again. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pleasure for us to be here uh, in Bonn for the SWIB uh, 2016 to present uh, the project linked to SWIB.ch. Uh, I'm Nicola uh, from Geneva, and I'm here with Felix from Cologne. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, the transition of SwissBib into a linked data infrastructure. <clears throat> so you may already know SwissBib, at least I hope you, you do, because it's cool. <laughs> uh, SwissBib uh, is the meta catalog of all the um, academic libraries and library networks in Switzerland. It includes about 50, 15 institutions that are basically library networks in Switzerland and more than 20 uh, millions of bibliographic records. <clears throat> Uh, the particularity of SwissBib is that it doesn't own any data, it just harvests the data from other institutions and deduplicates them. So if SwissBib wants to make any, to perform any data operations, it has, those operations have to be uh, done on a daily basis and they have to be fully automated. SwissBib is an evolving interface uh, with uh, new contents and new functionalities. For example, um, new contents come are brought through the integration of new uh, digital repositories, and new functionalities come with uh, projects like Link SwissBib. Uh, LinkSwissBib.ch uh, had the objective of making SwissBib a linked data compatible, and it has uh, specifically two concrete objectives. Uh, the first one is to create a RESTful API uh, so that the data of SwissBib are made openly available for uh, computer clients. Uh, and the second objective is to build uh, on this linked data a new interface, an improved interface with an added value for the end users. Uh, we are a small project uh, which will last for two years and a half, but we still have a few partners. Uh, the main one is uh, the Basel University Library, which maintains uh, the SwissBib Classic project. We are used to say SwissBib Classic for uh, the traditional interface and linked SwissBib for uh, the new project linked data. We also have two uh, universities of applied sciences in Switzerland, one in the French part in Geneva and the other. We collaborate with uh, Gizis, uh, which um, <coughs> works on the question of interlinking. And this project is financed with support of Swiss universities. Okay, so after two years of work, what do we have now? We have a great new interface with a home page, and on this home page we have this search field with uh, two tabs, and these tabs person here, authors, are uh, the new tabs of the search. Um, 
in the search field, we created um, an auto-suggest function, uh, which not only suggests books, but also uh, authors and subjects. So this auto-subject function is uh, faceted with uh, linked data. Uh, we created also uh, web pages for persons. Here you see uh, pages about Robert Walzer, uh, where we, we find additional information about this person. And this information comes from the linked open data cloud, and they passed through our interlinking processes and workflow in linked SwissBib. <clears throat> Uh, the same information can also be displayed in the form of a knowledge card. Uh, so this is a kind of window or pop-up window you can uh, open from a search result lists. And it gives a brief overview of the main information about a person or a subject. Okay, so I will uh, let the floor to Felix. Which, uh, who is going to explain you how we achieved it. Uh, hi, also from me. I'm here for the technical part. And I want to give you a small introduction into our architecture. Nicola presented already the uh, user interface and uh, the rest uh, full interface. And yeah, both uh, are served by um, um, Elasticsearch index that you can he uh, see here. And um, with this architecture, we want to connect the classic Swiss BIM with, Swiss BIM, with uh, the new um, interlinked linked Swiss BIM. Um, on the side of uh, classic Swiss BIM, we have this uh, CBS, uh, Central Bibliographic System, that collects all the metadata from the uh, connected libraries and uh, serves it as a uh, mark data. And uh, in order to index it, we uh, use meter factor here. Um, in this meter factor pipeline, um, we take the mark data, convert it to RDF according to a schema that we uh, yeah, developed for this, and thereby we split the records, the monolithic records. Um, into various bibliographic concepts, uh, bibliographic resource uh, that represents um, literature and also uh, some kinds of media document that uh, yeah, stores metadata about uh, yeah about metadata about how these records uh, were uh, came to the system and what happened to them. Then we have uh, data about the items, uh, the physical representations of uh, our resources, and then we have um, organizations here that are authors, and we have additionally here persons that are authors. And for the person authors, uh, we took them uh, as a first step for interlinking and enrichment. So. We take these persons and interlink them with DBpedia uh, and VF, and then we use the links that we get um, to extract additional information from these big corpora. And we pack it all together, and then we index it also into our Elasticsearch index and make it available for, yes, for search for our users. Um, but so far, um, for the next step, um, I picked through uh, three challenges that I want to introduce uh, in a bit more detail, starting with uh, how to present linked data uh, to our users, um, also how to do uh, the linking and enrichment, dealing with really large files here, and uh, for the third part, uh, a bit about license negotiations. Um, that's the part uh, when Nicola will uh, overtake here again. Okay, the linked data user interface. Uh, this work was actually carried out by our partners from the HTV Kur here. Um, we are not the first project um, offering our content as linked data. There are a few examples uh, that we had the chance to uh, take for orientation. Here's a small list, starting with data via an FFR. 
and many, many others. Um, we went through prototyping phase, we had some user tests, and then we came up with three concepts that we want to expose as linked data for our users. Um, ours is works and subjects here. Um, subjects are taken directly from the GND. It has nothing to do um, with the pipeline that you saw in the former slide. Um, yeah, we created a um, search with an author suggest uh, um, yeah, implementation uh, to help the user search in the data. And for this search, we also uh, use, for example, the enriched data, let's say pseudonyms that are not in the Swiss data and the original data. Um, we also offer information, um, yeah, alternative names here. And um, when we display the data, we also have information about spouses, partners, um, the movement, the respective also was in, um, yeah, that's the things that we display. And I want to leave a few more words about uh, why we took an elastic search. Um, usually, um, we would expect that uh, we take a, a triple store with a Sparkle access point in order to provide our data to our users. But uh, we think, um, yeah, our users are used to classic Swiss BIP, and it's already very elaborated, and we want to take, overtake these principles and use them to get uh, over, yeah, the, known, um, the known user experience for our users. Uh, so we focused on um, yeah, how, how to uh, provide uh, some kind of performance, and that's why we use Elasticsearch and applied a lot of background operations, uh, like loading content from, from, from the background, yeah. Good, for the next uh, challenge, the interlinking and enrichment. At this point, uh, we have the SwissBIP corpora. It has an update frequency for an, uh, once a day. Um, it stores mainly here, uh, at this point, um, information about persons. It's about seven gigabytes large. And we have also DBpedia, which is about uh, the corpus that we took, the subset of what is available from DBpedia, is about 35 gigabytes large. And we have VF, which, uh, okay. um, VF, which is about uh, 80 gigabytes large. Okay, and in order to interlink, you would have to compare every resource that is available in SwissBIP to every resource that is available in DBpedia and VF. But since this is so much data, we can't do this in one run. Um, and uh, we have to, to think about how to manage this. Um, so we use LIMES, a tool that is uh, suitable for interlink, was made for this, and uh, yeah, focuses on to do it in a very performant way, but still we have a really large memory footprint and uh, it would take ages if it uh, comes to an end at all. Um, so what we do here is we do some kind of preparation. Um, the idea is since DBpedia and VF update, let's say once a month, we have at least 29 um, phases where we don't have to update them when we want to, uh, yeah, to link. And, um, yeah, so we only have to do pre-processing with DBP that we have once, but with SwissBIP every day. And uh, that's rather suitable for us because SwissBIP is a smaller corpora here. Um, yeah, for this we rely on two concepts here. Uh, one is sorting. We get our RDF content here. We have it as a list of statements, in this case sorted and triples. And when we sort them in an alphabetical manner, we have all these resources kept together and in a certain order, and uh, that helps us with shaping. We can um, identify duplicate entries here and remove them, or we can extract certain kinds of resources. Also, it helps us with the alignment at the end. When we want to extract uh, the enrichment, we can just take our links uh, one by one and uh, search in the reference file, in the reference corpus, and we don't have to search this corpus for every link. We can just take the first link, search it, find it, take the second link, and go on from that point in the file where we have been, which reduces our, uh, our effort that we have to do here. Uh, for the second part, we use blocking. Uh, this is not a new 
uh, concept here, it's already a feature in Silk, for example. Um, the idea is here, we split our data into small packages so that we don't have to compare these big corpuses at once. Uh, so we just compare the packages, but still we have to interlink them crosswise, as you can see here on the left uh, hand side. Um, but we can take this packaging uh, a step further and use a blocking. Since we know we want to interlink by comparing first names, last names, and birth dates, we can help our algorithm to, um, yeah, we can help them by doing some kind of pre-grouping. In this case, we group all the persons that have a last name starting with a certain letter in one um, block, and uh, we do this on both sides, on both corporas, and then we only have to compare the respective corpora, and that helps us with the complexity. Okay, so when we have done this, uh, we can have this, um, this um, workflow here, starting with the import, when we get, for example, um, yeah, um, our data in, let's say, JSON ID, we have to transform it into n triples or whatever. Um, then we sort data, as I described, we shape away all unused data, we block, and then we can start with the linking, um, meaning we link with Wikipedia, and then again against the VF, and then the enrichment part, um, so that we take our links to identify the resource in DBpedia and VF, extract the data, and then merge it all together. And for the merge part, um, also the um, sorting helps here, because um, yeah, when we have those both corporate sorted it moves all together. Okay, and if we do that and assume that DBpedia and VF is already pre-processed because we're not at the beginning of the month, um, yeah, then we have a processing time from about three and a half, three and a half hours and that's used for daily updates. Okay, that's so far for the technical part and I hope there's still time for it. <laughs> so just a word about, just a word about the license negotiation. At the beginning of the project, we focused on results, so we didn't want to start with license negotiation with library networks, but we soon realized that it would take time. So we made an open data call where we gather 69% uh, uh, of positive uh, responses and decisions in principle for a CC0 license. Then we, we made an open bibliographical data workshop with those um, institutions. And after that, so today we, we are uh, at about 15, 85% of decision for CC0. And the objective of this workshop was to create uh, declarations for those data that are online uh, available. So an online web page that says our data are, are available um, with those terms of use. A uh, small outlook, because uh, our work, uh, there is still work to do uh, in this area. We will have to uh, attribute persistent identifiers for the meta catalog, which is not an easy task, because the records of SwissBib are moving uh, every day. Uh, we will have to shift uh, this infrastructure into a productive uh, service within the SwissBib environment and we will maybe have to integrate uh, other data, other authority files from Swiss in institutions, uh, and there is a work also in the, in the question of uh, interlinking processes and optimization. More about the project, I encourage you to, to visit us on GitHub and to read uh, our blog. We wrote a series of articles uh, about the project in French and German. And uh, you can also try to type in your web browser linked.swissbib.ch, but it won't work uh, very well because it's still a work in progress. Uh, we are currently working on the index, so you may be disappointed by the results, but we will, uh, we will make an announcement uh, when it will be okay uh, for the visits. So, thank you for your attention. We have time for one question. 
Thank you. Very inspiring presentation. And um, yeah, uh, just one question: Do, um, Is your um, data model that you use to publish these works? Does it really? Um, do you have any mechanism for grouping together different editions of the same, let's say, the same book or different translations, like, for example, the the French and the Spanish national libraries do? So you mean Ferber or uh, yeah, something like, like Ferber or Bibframe, where you have yeah. a yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we didn't focus on that, but this is the task uh, which is uh, performed by the CBS uh, part of SwissBib. Uh, so SwissBib Classic, which groups um, the works together, and uh, we try. So we tried to uh, transform these works and the the. the the manifestations of these works into linked data, but then uh, we decided to focus on the enrichment part of persons, so we abandoned for a first uh, step the, the work and the manifestations levels. So maybe in the future we will uh, address the pro the, this problem again, but for now we focus on person. Okay, thanks. Okay, so thank you very much again. Thank you. And, uh, uh, and now it's coffee break. Uh, we should be back at 10.45 uh, in this room for the next session.